Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I wanted to show you in this video how to go about making a combination bone and tooth or uh, soft tissue supported guide. Now, there's a variety of circumstances that you might come into where you needed to do this, but the most notable one in my mind is when you have a, uh, a guide that's going to be a distal extension supported by just tissue. So if you look right here, we're going to be placing three implants in the posterior mandible. And we've already designed the surgical guide for the fully guided keyless kit from Blue Sky Bio. And as you can see, this is uh, tooth supported in the anterior, but it's only soft tissue supported in the posterior. So you can imagine as you're doing surgery, it's going to be very prone to having a little bit of squish. Uh, the, the guide can seat and, and deviate down into the tissue a little bit, causing your surgery to not be as accurate. So how can we get around that? Well, one way is to go about uh, making a bone stop on this guide. And so in essence, we could uh, segment a little portion of the mandible in this area and then form another guide there, combine the two, and then we'll have the best of both worlds. We'll have a tooth and tissue supported guide, but it will actually have a, a bone stop on the most posterior area here. So I'll go about showing you how I do that. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is segment a portion of the bone. And so uh, segmentation can be done by going to panels, uh, segmentation, and we want to choose advanced jaw segmentation. Now it's going to lead you through a little wizard. And in this case, we don't need to do very much of the mandible at all. We just really need a, a small section of bone that can serve as a stop for this. And so the software is going to take me through a wizard. It's asking me to indicate which jaw I'm going to do. So I'm going to do an area from about the second implant and just on the crest back to about right here. So very small. And when we click next, you can see this is going to force us to go through about six slices. That's very minimal. This won't take any time at all to do. So I'm going to use the intelligent lasso tool. And this highlighted area, that's the area that I indicated I wanted to segment, we're going to go ahead and begin the segmentation process. The intelligent lasso will take everything that's above a certain density threshold and say that's bone. Uh, obviously, this is bone as well, so we're going to have to go back and define manually that we want to include that as well. Now, we can use this fill holes tool, but it has to have a consistent boundary all around. So you'll notice I took the brush, I closed this, and now I can push fill holes, and now we move to the next slice. Intelligent lasso, once again, include everything within this highlighted area. Uh, anywhere you need to, you can close the boundaries. And it's better to have a little excess. You don't have to, it's not like coloring where you have to perfectly stay within the lines. Uh, what would be a problem is if you didn't include enough of the mandible and that resulted in a positive, or I should say a negative error. And thus the guide would build down into a hole that in reality is not there. So if you go a little overboard, don't worry about it, should be fine. Now it's gonna go through a couple of cross-sectional slices and we do the exact same thing. Intelligent lasso, use the brush, close it in from all sides, and then fill the holes. And two more slices to do. Now you could certainly add more if you wanted to, um, but I don't think that we're going to need to really add much more in this case to get a, a good segmentation on just this very small piece of mandible. Let's hide our implants. And one more time here. Close it with the brush. And fill the holes. Next. And the software is going to warn me, hey, you only did a, a small number. At least I think it will. Most times it will warn you if you do a minimal number of slices like that. In this case, it didn't. Uh, but you can see that it generated a bone model. And again, this is a little positive error. That's what I was talking about. I went a little excessive, but that is of no consequence. Um, you can see that as we go posterior, how it kind of sticks up a little bit beyond the bone. No problem with that. I like to also go in and inflate the surface one time and then smooth the surface. Again, this just creates uh, a nice smooth surface and will include hopefully any little parts that might have gotten left out. So now you can click create surface and it's going to generate a 
um, a bone model. This is now going to be just another STL in the case. And we need to verify the accuracy of this segmentation. And so let's do that by visualizing here. This is the portion that was segmented. All right. And looks like everything is good. I'm basically going to create a bony stop right in this area. So a super small guide. Let's look one more time back here. All right, that looks great. So let's now go back, turn on the implants, and hide this guide. And we're going to create a new surgical guide. So we're going to build it onto the bone surface. Normal quality on the mandible. Let's draw the curve. I need to hide this as well. Okay, so draw the curve. And we're just going to include maybe that much. Okay, very small. Edit the curve. That looks good. Create the surgical guide. Uh, it says you don't include all the tubes. I do want to continue because remember, we've already got one guide that includes all the tubes. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. Um, here is the resulting guide. If you need to, you can trim that up a little bit with your cut tool. But now let's look at what we've got. Uh, we've got the lower model. We've got the bone supported guide right here. That's going to be our bony stop. And here is this surgical guide. Now remember, they share the same common guide tube. And so now if I wanted to combine these two, all I have to do is go to File, Export Data, and let's check everything off except for these two guides. So surgical guide, that's the one on the bone, and this is what I named the other one. We're going to export these. I'm calling this combination guide. Save this on the desktop. All right, great. And if we wanted to, we could now go back and open this. And so let's look for combination guide. And you could open this in Mesh Mixer, whatever program you like. But you're going to notice that now, since we exported these together, they are a single STL. Now, there's a slight little bug in the software right now, which we're actually in the process of correcting, um, where it's building this excessive um, ledge right here. So I can correct that uh, very simply by just plain cutting that off. And now we have a guide that's ready to go. Tooth and soft tissue supported everywhere up here. And then a small bone um, portion right here that's going to uh, support this in the posterior and just ensure that we've got a hard tissue stop. And now that this uh, guide is not going to, to deviate and it's not going to squish into the tissue when we're drilling. Uh, so I hope you find that helpful. I would probably, when you print this, um, you know, profile this back with just a hand piece, make it very minimal. You just need a very small uh, stop right there on the bone, and that will make this easier to tuck under the flap as well. All right, hope you found that helpful.